Ibrahim Traore, who is the president of Burkina Faso and the youngest head of the state in the entire world, is making radical changes in his country. He said enough is enough, and now he is literally changing the entire landscape. The focus lies in getting rid of and kicking the former colonial powers, which sucked Burkina Faso's blood and resources. For decades, the people of Burkina Faso have worked in the worst conditions to mine gold, which sadly ends up being in former colonial powers' hands. Everybody knew that Ibrahim Traore, being 34, was seeing this poor state and planning ahead on how to turn the tables. Just recently, addressing businessmen and media, he announced he is reclaiming Burkina Faso's gold mines, doing everything necessary. Whether anyone likes it or not, he will no longer see the young people of Burkina Faso mine all day for foreign powers. But this announcement is just the tip of the iceberg. What he said next might have shocked all European powers and the U.S. alike. Let's find out what he said and how he plans to reclaim Burkina Faso's gold mines. Let's get started. In August this year, Ibrahim Traore addressed the youth of Burkina Faso and businessmen at the International Youth Day celebrations. Nobody had expected that Ibrahim would reveal his policy about reclaiming gold at such an instant. However, since he was talking to the youth, and most people employed in gold mining are youth, he felt the urge to tell them that this would change. Since assuming power in September 2022, he has been on his way to making Burkina Faso stand on its legs by tapping into the resources it holds. During the ceremony, he took the stage and said that International Youth Day is in conflict with what the Western world has been doing with African countries. He said that whatever was being done to African countries was the worst and barbaric example of imperialism. He pointed out that even if Europe and the U.S. ended slavery, people in Africa have been treated like slaves by the former colonial powers, controlling gold mines. Often people give an argument that the Western world ended slavery, but it is still going on in Africa. Well, it's correct they have to know that it's the Western powers who are not letting slavery die. They force young people of Africa to work in the worst conditions, in gold mines. They risk their lives for Europe's profits and get nothing more than the bare food they can survive on. Ibrahim said that neo-colonialism existed in Burkina Faso and exists to this day in some sectors, which will change now. That's when he finally revealed how he is planning to change this. He said that Burkina Faso has formulated a policy which focuses on reclaiming the gold mines. He pointed out that what's happening in Burkina Faso might be happening in Europe and the Americas in the 1800s, when black slaves were used there. They were forced to work in most disturbing conditions. And sadly, this prevails in Burkina Faso today. They give up their everything and enter the mines, knowing that they might lose their lives. What about their families and their own self? Why are they being forced to work in these conditions? What's more, whatever they do and whatever amount of gold they take out, it goes to the European powers because they have mining rights. That's how Europe has structurally controlled Burkina Faso's gold mining sector. But this won't continue any longer. Ibrahim Traore said that we are going to change and modernize it a bit, which will create a huge difference. He said that he has founded a company that will overtake all the mining sites in Burkina Faso, particularly the gold mines. After reclaiming, European companies will be asked to leave because whatever agreements were done with them were based on absolute exploitation. The newly created company will ensure that the extracted gold stays in Burkina Faso and its benefits reach the people. In this way, instead of working in poor conditions, the mining sectors will be modernized, allowing people to extract gold the way modern countries do. Gold exploitation from now on will mean using it to modernize and enrich the people of Burkina Faso, not Europeans. Former colonizers have had enough of exploitations. From now on, things will be different. He said that Burkina Faso will fight terrorism with not only weapons but with development. He highlighted the fact that when the youth know that whatever they do will benefit others, not them, they will fall prey to illegal activities. It's because they are unemployed and they need a source of income to improve their lives. However, in the gold mines run by European companies, we see a wild contradiction to this. People's lives are not improved there. Rather, they are made worse. Hence, Ibrahim said that Burkina Faso, once its new company is functional, will offer job opportunities to the youth of Burkina Faso. People should know that from that moment on, whatever they will do, it will benefit their own country and themselves, not European countries. At the ceremony, various businessmen were present and Ibrahim shifted his attention toward them. 
He clearly asked them to get ready because he was going to force their hand in creating opportunities for the youth of Burkina Faso. Since businessmen are the key figures in the economic landscape, they have the power to create job opportunities and gradually bring Burkina Faso back on track. He said that Burkina Faso is also launching APEC, an initiative which focuses on redefining businesses in Burkina Faso. The reason behind this is that Burkina Faso has raw materials for nearly everything. However, it imports the finished products which it can create at home. He said we have tomatoes, but we cannot create tomato paste. He mentioned that it's quite absurd that despite having oil seed, Burkina Faso cannot process it. It's due to how European powers tried to keep Burkina Faso dependent, despite having all the necessary raw materials. He confessed that during this road to self-sufficiency and absolute independence, imperial powers would try their best to stop Burkina Faso. They will do their best to create enough hurdles that Burkina Faso gives up its plans and accepts what was going on before. However, he said that if the people of Burkina Faso become united in this fight, which is for their own welfare, no one can sabotage anything. And that's when he said something, which created shockwaves. He said that the fight Burkina Faso is fighting is not alone. It's the fight of the entire African continent. In other words, whatever Burkina Faso will do from now on should be adopted by other African countries' leaders to get rid of the former colonial powers and their control. This means that the imperial European powers, who will be making evil plans to sabotage Burkina Faso, will have to take care of the entire Africa. Well, that will be impossible for them. Even if they can use blackmailing and unethical means to control one country, they cannot do this with the entire Africa. That's why in the past few years, more coups have been happening in Africa, and leaders loyal to their countries are getting power. Well, Ibrahim Traoré's impressive strategies are not new. He already showed what he intended to do with Burkina Faso when he assumed power in 2022. He certainly revealed his bold plans and moves at the second Russia-Africa Economic and Humanitarian Forum, which are today a reality. In a clear call for a significant change in the way African leaders conduct themselves, Traoré urged his fellow African leaders not to fall under the influence of imperialist forces. He expressed this by saying that African heads of state must stop acting like puppets who dance whenever the imperialists pull the strings. Traoré also emphasized the crucial need for African nations to achieve food self-sufficiency. He commended Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to provide free grain to six African nations after the Black Sea deal collapsed, while also presenting it as a wake-up call for African leaders. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Concluding his speech, Traor echoed the powerful words from Thomas Sankara's 1984 UN address. The slave who cannot revolt does not deserve pity, and ended with Sankara's signature phrase, fatherland or death, we shall triumph. These words resonated like a rallying cry, quickly spreading through social media and striking a chord with African youths. Traore aims not only to ignite this spirit within his own nation, but across the entire African continent. His plea is for a future where Africa is no longer subject to external exploitation, but stands united as a federation of self-reliant and resilient nations recognized equally on the global stage. As Traore emphasized in his speech, this is not merely an aspiration, but a necessity for Africa's survival and progress. This call to action goes beyond inspiring the dormant but resilient spirit of the African people. It embodies more than just words. It covers the essence of a continent that remains inexhaustible in its pursuit of dignity, autonomy, and prosperity, despite the challenges of the past and present. This sentiment was vividly displayed in the enthusiastic welcome Traore received from the people of Burkina Faso upon his return on July 31st. Traore, at just 34 years old, assumed the role of head of state and leader of the Patriotic Movement for Safeguard and Restoration, making him the youngest serving head of state globally. This overthrow was not an isolated event. It was part of a broader trend in Africa, where five similar coups occurred between August 2020 and July 2023 in Mali, Chad, Guinea, Burkina Faso, and now Niger and Gabon. All these countries were once colonies of France. These significant political disruptions represent a protest against what is perceived as the enduring influence of colonialism, often referred to as Franca Freak. The leaders behind these coups openly criticized civilian political authorities for their perceived inaction and subservience to this system. They questioned the role and even the involvement of Western powers in spreading terrorism across Africa. 
especially after NATO assassinated Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Key issues include the proliferation of military bases across Africa and unfair trade agreements that primarily benefit foreign multinational corporations. The coup leaders argued that these factors only perpetuate a cycle of exploitation, hindering Africa's growth and development. Citizens in these nations have often expressed support for military takeovers. For example, in Mali, large protests led to the removal of the sitting president with the public backing the military and its mission. This proves that Ibrahim Traoré's plan to encourage African leaders to join hands and make a collective fight against neocolonialism will bring fruits very soon. The coup occurred in series, being coherent with the broad plan of making Africa free from former colonial powers. And now, if they join hands, it will be easier than ever to make the African continent more powerful than Europe and America are today. Just imagine the resulting power of a collective Africa if all its leaders like Ibrahim Traoré join hands together. They can allow their countries to modernize, jump forward, and achieve the same level of prosperity which European powers have been enjoying until now. Traoré's ascent to power in Burkina Faso is part of this larger narrative, a wave of military-led coups across French-speaking Africa. As these nations grapple with political instability, the world watches, hoping for peaceful transitions and sustainable development. History bears witness to the assassinations of influential African and Black leaders like Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, Amilcar Cabral, Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., and Muammar Gaddafi. These leaders often clashed with Western interests. Despite this dark history, there is hope that Burkina Faso's current leader will continue to pursue African sovereignty and prosperity, defying the geopolitical forces that claimed the lives of his revolutionary predecessors. This new wave of military leadership occurs during a growing geopolitical contest, a renewed scramble for Africa. Former colonial powers like France and the UK, along with the United States, are re-engaging with the continent. However, the landscape has changed to include new global players like China, Turkey, India, and Brazil, all eager to establish their presence. Unlike the 1884-1885 Berlin Conference, which divided Africa into artificial nation states and exploited its resources, there was a growing desire for autonomy on the continent. They had divided Africa, but now it will be united and make the European powers answer about what they did with it for centuries. African nations are no longer passive observers in global affairs. They are asserting themselves as significant actors, shaping their own destinies amid international attention. This transformation is occurring in a world where multiplicity reigns, as described by Amitav Acharya in 2014. In this multiplex world, no single director or producer monopolizes attention or loyalty for long. The audience has choices. As Africa undergoes these profound changes, assessing their full extent and potential remains a complex task. However, one thing is clear. The voices advocating for revolution are gaining resonance, not only within Africa, but also far beyond its borders. African people in diaspora embody the vision advocated by influential figures such as Marcus Garvey, Webb Du Bois, Richard Wright, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Huey P. Newton. They are a powerful support for the leaders who are fighting against Western exploitative measures. That's the reason people in Africa are welcoming the coups. In this way, they are getting rid of their civilian leaders who played their roles as Europe's puppets. However, when it comes to the military leaders, they seek independence, advocating for Africa's true independence. Additionally, influential African figures are capturing the imagination of the continent's youth. The time may indeed have come for the realization of Charles Henry Pearson's 1893 prediction and Gustave Le Bon's 1894 psychological laws of human evolution, which hinted at Africa's rise following China, a resurgence driven by population growth and industrialization. Certainly, Africa's demographic makeup, characterized by a youthful and growing population and abundant natural resources, adds a unique dimension to this hopeful scenario. The continent can harness its demographic strength to advance its aspirations for self-governance. As the pendulum of change swings, the collective energy of Africa's youth may well be the catalyst that empowers the continent to stand not as a subordinate, but as an equal player on the global stage. Hence, Ibrahim Traore addressed the youth, telling them that Burkina Faso and the entire Africa are not poor. European powers have made it poor by stealing the resources. Therefore, they have to work this time for their country so it can be set free from the shackles of neo-colonialism. 
Already Ibrahim has taken the first step by announcing to reclaim Burkina Faso's gold mines. Now imagine what if all African countries decide to kick out the European companies exploiting their resources? It's not an impossible plan. They just have to create a company, the same way Ibrahim Traore has planned to establish. This will ensure that whatever resources are exploited in the country, their benefits stay in the country. Ibrahim has emerged as not a leader of Burkina Faso, but a beacon of hope for the entire Africa. Leaders of other countries can join hands with him and unlock the true power that African countries hold. Do you think Ibrahim Traore will succeed in reclaiming his country's gold? Isn't it true that he is powerful enough to do this because the people of Burkina Faso are with him? Let us know your thoughts on his grand plan to do the same with the entire Africa, making it independent and free from colonial powers. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.